I think I see an alligator over there. So go see if we can find it. Wait. I'm not in the marsh. I bet you're ready to go see some animals in the marsh. I know I am. Well, I guess we better get there. Well, we made it to my backyard. Are y'all ready to go see some more? I am. Let's go explore some more of it. Come on, let's go. buggy. You can't get around the marsh that easily. You have to have something like a marsh buggy or an airboat to actually navigate through there. You can't just walk because you'll sink. So today we're going to hike on one of these to begin with and let's begin our adventure. Well, we're out here where it is wet and we need this marsh buggy to get around and check on our backyard or do what we call a prescribed or controlled burn, which is a management practice to replenish the marsh nutrients and get rid of dry and unwanted grasses. Along the way, we will see lots of wildlife, including wild feral hogs and muskrat nests. first adventures we're gonna have is here at the saltwater barrier gates and it is what it sounds like a gate that basically regulates the amount of salt water and fresh water enter and leave the marsh as you can see it's high tide and the water is rushing in through the gate right now it will probably eventually cover some of the plants in the marsh but one amazing thing about this place since you have fresh water and you have salt water, which is brackish water, well, you have fresh water and salt water organisms around here, or animals. So we're gonna be able to find a lot of biodiversity here with this salt water and fresh water area. And let's see what we can find. Let's grab some nets and see what we can find. So one of our first activities we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to catch a blue crab. And it's like fishing except for you're tying a piece of meat onto a rope and you have a net to scoop it up. So here's some leftover roast I had in the kitchen. And you could use a chicken leg or a piece of sausage. We have some sausage too with us. And you just tie it onto the rope. And then you basically put it down here in the water and let's see what we can catch. Sometimes it could be a little tricky to catch these tasty blue crabs. Some people like to use crab traps, but I like to use the old fashioned net, rope with the bait, because it's just so much fun. And because we have such mild winters, you can find a bunch of these blue crabs during the summer. Look at there, we caught one. Ain't she a beauty? Let's look at her up close. Crabs are crustaceans and they have compound eyes. They can see all the way around them. And they have five pairs of legs, including the pinchers. And the last pair are paddles, so they can swim or dig in the mud. This is a female crab. As you can see right here, it is very wide across. If it's narrow, then it's a male crab. This is a female crab. We also have fiddler crabs. 
They move sideways, have one little pincher, one big pincher, and they live in the holes in the mud. And they get their name from the way they move their pincher, like a fiddle. So let's get our gear on and get ready to get into the water. shrimp. Shrimp love to live in marsh estuaries to have their babies. They'll lay up to 100,000 to a million eggs and 24 hours later they'll hatch and they'll live there a while until it's time to swim out to the ocean and they swim using their little legs called the swimmerettes. They've caught many fish too and all fish are shaped a little different. You can look at their shapes and fins to identify what kind of fish they are. This is a Texas croaker. It's part of the drum family, but it gets its name for the sound it makes. Let's listen. The best way to get in the middle of a marsh, well, maybe not the best way, but a fun way to get in the middle of the marsh is to take a kayak from a bayou through a slough. And a slough is basically a natural ditch that runs through the marsh. So I'm about to jump on and see what we can find out in the middle of the marsh. There were a gar coming right up to the kayak and actually hitting the kayak. There was alligator gar and needle nose gar. There's actually four species of gar in Texas, but the alligator gar is unique. It is the largest of the gar species. It can actually get up to eight foot and weigh up to 300 pounds. That kayaking trip was so much fun. We've seen so many things so far. We've seen some alligator gar, some crab, and shrimp. I'm really ready to go actually see the alligators. And I know the perfect spot to go find that mama alligator and her babies. I'm ready to go. How about you? Here we got the American alligator. It's a lot different from a crocodile. It's got a wider snout. She's not as big as a crocodile would be. She is a little aggressive right now because she's protecting her babies. I'm trying to be really careful because I might have to run here in a second. She could come out on bank and they're kind of fast when they come out. But we are in Anahuac, Texas. This is the alligator capital of Texas. So we have lots of these around here. I'm gonna get out of her way. How exciting. I've got a baby alligator here. It's probably about two years old. You can hear it's making a noise. It's calling for its mama. I hope the mama doesn't come. But alligators are reptiles. They are cold-blooded. Sometimes you'll see them sit up on the uh, side of the bank because they're sunning and they're trying to regulate their temperature. But when it gets too warm, they'll go under the water and be under there for a little while. And a neat thing about alligators is they lay eggs in a big old nest. So a mama alligator might make 60 to 70 eggs in a big old nest and it looks like a hay pile. So the temperature of the eggs, you know, if it gets hotter or colder, will determine whether it becomes a boy or a girl. 
But as you can see, it's ready to go back to its mama. So we're gonna release it back into the wild. Here. Let's see if we can find a few birds on the way home. Southeast Texas is one of the best birding places in the whole wide world. There are thousands of species of birds that come here, and all are adapted in many different ways. Some have long beaks, some have short beaks, some have long legs, some have short legs. But this is one of the best places in the world and a birder's dream right here. hope that you enjoyed your journey through the marsh and getting to see all the animals today. I know I did. I love having all this in my backyard and I hope that someday that maybe you could come visit Anawak and see all this too. So anyways, I gotta get back to Beaumont. I guess I better get back over there. Y'all ready? I hope you enjoyed the marsh today. I hope you learned a lot about animals and everything that the marsh contains. Uh, thank you for coming. And this video is brought to you by Texas A&M AgriLife Extension and Texas Sea Grant. Thank you and goodbye.